Hey, it's Martin here, and in this video, I will go into the details of how I improvise using this dual four track tape setup. It's nothing super complicated or anything, but there are a lot of details and uh, systems uh, which I use that all add up so that I can make a live stream performance. First of all, you might ask, uh, why make ambient music on these old machines at all? It's quite anachronistic, right? And pretty much everything you can do functionally on these machines, you can of course do in Ableton or any door of your choosing. To that, I would answer the sound. These four track machines and cassette tapes in general have their own textures and ways of saturating and mixing things together. It's a very focused aesthetic. You can call it retro nostalgia or punk electronica or just digital grainy slo-fi. I dig it and uh, I like bathing in these magnetic waves. Another reason, of course, is that everything is under hands-on control. There are knobs, faders, switches for everything. And that makes uh, the music more sort of, I'm more so connect connected to the music, uh, much more so than um, mousing on a cursor over a laptop screen. Of course, a lot of the music that I make on these tapes is made on a computer. But when it winds up in the four track machines, it becomes sort of playable for me. And the limitations of this setup are something that spurs my creativity. I don't get lost down the rabbit hole of infinite possibilities on computers. These um, cassette machines are the Tascam Porter Studio 424. Mark One, and they have a particular set of um, functions that I find really useful for performing on. Specifically, the uh, three tape speeds, high, normal, and slow. Most recorders only have two, high and normal, and that slow speed is really, really nice and crunchy. It also has a high EQ and a low EQ. Simple, functional, like a DJ. You also have aux sends and Q sends, which I use to integrate these um, guitar effects pedals. And I'll come back to them and explain why I choose these particular effects. So why have two of these machines? Well, exactly like a DJ, it's for playing one track on one and another track on another. So you can make a flow happening and keep it going. The main difference is that uh, I don't attempt to uh, uh, perfectly synchronize the music between the two players, which I think a lot of people would actually say this is the entire point and skill of being a DJ. And I suppose if I put a lot of time and effort into practicing synchronizing the music, uh, I'd get better at it. But honestly, it make the whole thing kind of boring for me. It would kind of remove all the surprises and um, I wouldn't be able to sort of enjoy the new combinations that would emerge while playing. Anyway, let's take a look at how I uh, structure my cassette tape library. There's uh, the color labeling, of course. There are six colors, and uh, the major ones are the pink beat cassettes and the uh, green drones. Start with the pink ones. These have beats on them. You know, I separate all the components of a drum kit out on each track, like a kick on the first track, a snare on the second, cymbals on the third, and so on and so forth. But it could also be sort of uh, percussion parts or drum breaks or chains being rattled. You know, anything rhythmic goes on the beat tapes. Green tapes are drones, they're kind of the opposite. They have no rhythmic elements on them. They can be harmonic or inharmonic, unchanging sounds. So it could be a chord on one and then a single tone on the other. As long as there's no rhythms on it, then they can combine nicely with the pink beats. You know. And um, I'd say 70 to 80% of the time I'm combining green tapes with pink beats and therefore there's no need to sync at all. Moving on, for the other categories, there's the yellow for voices. And uh, this doesn't have to mean singing, it can also mean sort of people just talking or crowds murmuring or cats wailing or whatever. I tend to put singing in the green drones category. Or the orange category, which is for uh, monophonic playing, bass, riffs, arps, that kind of thing. Well, I mean, when I started this one, I tended to take each tone of a riff and split it out on each track. And therefore you can pan a riff all over the place and add effects on each part of the riff. And that was uh, the original idea for this. But nowadays I'm kind of just putting lots of melodic riffs on top of each other and um, creating a flow from that, which makes this category not so strict as the others. And it's very challenging to mix in, but that's part of the fun, right? The uh, blue tapes are for Foley. Foley is a term from the film industry, which means sounds that are neither dialogue or music. So these are just interesting timbers of sounds like uh, the scrape of a pencil or the squeaking of a chair, that kind of thing. I think this one, yeah, this one has uh, just water sounds. Uh, waves crashing on one, caves dripping in another, or dripping in caves, and rain and then a flood here, yeah. The blue ones can make a nice little break 
from the music in your set. The last category is the white dubs. These are basically just full songs that I've made uh, split out over the four tracks. You know, each instrument has its track. I also use uh, things like uh, the Koala sampler or uh, the Koso app from Splice Music. This last method has been a really fun way of making a lot of tapes, but I use it kind of differently from what is intended. When you open it up, you can select a style of uh, music or genre, and it automatically, through the power of AI, suggests bass, chords, uh, drums, vocals, everything as a full track. I often delete this uh, immediately and ask it to present me with eight tracks of the same type, like eight drum loops or eight synth lines or something. And then I just swipe right on the things that I don't think are nice until I find something that is worthy of magnetizing onto tapes. It's kind of like using the power of AI to sort through other musicians' trash. Maybe trash is the wrong word. It basically splices a library of other musicians' hard drives. It's all the samples and riffs and musical ideas that they couldn't find a use for in a full song, and so they uploaded it to Splice instead. I'm not saying this is a negative thing, I think it's fantastic. Um, perhaps a more accurate description would be musical recycling, which I really like in terms of, you know, uh, recording to tape because I'm also recycling the tapes, you know. There's something very strangely satisfying about using old tapes and uh, cassettes with AI. By now I have about over 250 tapes. I'd say maybe almost half of them are from the Koso app. And it's kind of start to feel like a whole radio station of music from an alternate reality. Uh, of course, I have to say there are forms of music which lend themselves better to playing on unsynced tapes, ambient obviously, but also so that super slow and crunchy lo-fi beats, you know, that are below tempo of most genres, you know. Parts of Acid House and the sound design aspects of techno also really work. And it's been a long process of discovery and figuring out what things work together, and um, it's, it's enjoyable. It's, I like that part, you know. It's like I'm uncovering new soundscapes and uh, it could be called uh, sonic spelunking or audio archaeology. And should you like to join me on such an exploration, you can click like and subscribe and uh, you'll see me in the next one. Oh yes, I also got to talk about the effects. Each tape machine is hooked up to a reverb and a delay. And let's go from left to right. The first one is the Empress Effects Reverb, which has a whole bunch of algorithms. I mean, I'll just tell you which ones here, the last ones. Ghost, Lo-Fi and Beer. It gets weird and I love it. It's also got a um, sort of five track looper, which is actually quite fun in terms of I can perform uh, a section from the loops and then record it. And then this will keep on going when I put a new tape on. Uh, the next effect is the um, even tied ultra tap. And this is a modeless delay, but a very capable one and can easily produce sort of granular ish patterns. Tap tempo is right here on the front, and that's really useful for syncing to uh, to the beats that are being made. Then there is the Eventide Black Hole, which is a reverb algorithm that makes everything sound huge. I don't think I can get a bad sound out of this thing. I don't think anybody can get a bad sound out of this thing. It's, uh, it's great. Then lastly, we have the uh, Empress Effects Echo System, which is a delay with so many weird and wonderful uh, algorithms, like uh, stutter, lo-fi, and whiskey, you know. It's also got that five track looper and um, I never really use it outside of single mode because otherwise it would just become too much and kind of confusing for a live performance. Anyway, I hope you got something out of this video and uh, thanks for watching. Hey.